See us at Wizard World Madison from November 30th to December 2nd, where we'll have plenty of DVDs and things to sign. And if you use the promo code CINEMA20, you can get 20% off your tickets by visiting www.wizardworld.com. In last week's episode on 42nd Street Forever Volume 4, we put it to a vote to see which reviewed trailer would become the next Cinema Snob episode. And pretty much everyone in the comments guessed it would be the Robbie Benson monkey movie Die Laughing. Which means that that one didn't even come close. Poor Silent Scream also scored low, probably because I uh, misspelled the title, when the real title is obviously Silent Cream. Though I guess there were a couple more people interested in that than in The Sister The, which didn't even have a single vote. More people were interested in Until September, and that wasn't even on the list. But on the plus side, the town that dreaded sundown did edge out the second most popular choice, the clan. Damn it, I was looking forward to talking about this scene from the clansmen. <laughs> OJ done torched that clan. Oh, and I'm glad Shout at the Devil didn't win either. That movie is really long, and I don't know anything about Motley Crue references. So let this be a lesson to you on the importance of voting. It keeps the clan from winning. The Town That Dreaded Sundown is a 1976 cult film directed by the legend of Boggy Creek's Charles B. Pierce and written by Earl E. Smith, who also wrote Boggy Creek. The film is the true story of how, in 1946, a serial killer known as the Phantom Killer terrorized Texarkana only to forever remain uncaptured and his identity unknown. While the movie opened to solid reviews, given that the historical inaccuracies led to some lawsuits, I'm guessing the movie takes a few liberties with this case. That'll explain the hardcore love scene between the Phantom Killer and the Falk Monster. Like Boggy Creek, the movie is presented like a pseudo-documentary with even the same narrator, although this time we open in 1940s Hill Valley. World War II had ended only eight months earlier. <laughs> Spoiler! Although a trickle was still arriving, most of the boys were back home and out of uniform. Then our boys worked as manual door openers and grew paranoid about the political climate. Some people still had doubts about President Truman and were worried over the growing tension with Russia. And lesbian weddings, or how the Hapshat wedding will cause Brad and Janet's engagement to overshadow their wedding. People even began parking indoors and blocking men's restrooms. The new housing projects were very bad at keeping out wind and rain. But everything changed on this date. A terror so indelibly imprinted that today, 30 years later, people still speak of it fearfully. Pfft, I'm watching this movie more than 30 years later. Get with the Times movie! But don't forget that this is a true story in that, well, Texarkana is a real place. The incredible story you are about to see is true. Only the names have been changed. Holy shit, Farmer Ted is the killer! Like in every horror film, the teen boy wants her to get a good whiff of his pits before he, uh, searches her panties for his lost meatball sandwich. Why are they saying the killer is unknown? He's clearly a life-size sack of potatoes. I gotta admit, Marty and George McFly's plan is too dark, but at least she and the Phantom Killer made a darling husband and wife. And that's the town that dreaded sundown. So dreadful that this is a sunrise. The movie stars Ben Johnson, seen here passed out drunk and in a dress, 
Poor Andrew Prine does have a contact with Wonder Woman, but unfortunately, it's only the 1974 version. She'll be of no use to this case at all. Good news is, they're still alive. Bad news, that means the killer is terrible at his job. I just don't understand why you had to shave her head, Earl. By the way, I'm naming all the characters Earl. Makes sense, given that the writer's name is also Earl. I think this killer may be crazy and weird. Try it, this, Chief. The only thing we really do know is that we've got a very strange person on our hands. Killing is one thing, but why did he have to stuff micro-machines up young Earl's dick? They're trying to solve the case, but they keep getting interrupted by the director. What the hell's wrong with you, boy? You try that again, and the Supreme Court of the United States ain't gonna be able to save your ass. Why are you turned on by this? I don't know how to tell you both this, but there is definitely an alien ship hovering in the chief's office. The narration tells us who's who, but let the characters tell you how the rain makes this just like Japan. Kind of reminds me of Japan. Damn, it always rained there. All those Japanese girls scrubbing your back. I must say they do know how to please a man. <laughs> I cheated on you with so many Japanese prostitutes, they rolled my dick like pickled carrots. Looking at this rain makes Andrew Prine think Simon the King of Witches could solve this case in an instant by zapping the phantom killer into a wet mirror. Everything is stopping him from finding the killer. First, the roads are lined with diarrhea from the last chili cook-off. Then, empty cars are acting too high and mighty. And then the rain won't make up its mind on whether it's lightly drizzling or pouring. Between this weather and the legend of Boggy Creek, I am convinced that Texarkana is the Bermuda Triangle of the States. This actually has nothing to do with the Phantom Killer. He just got his ass kicked for wearing blackface to Town Hall. And these Texarkana hippies take tree-hugging too literally. And there goes Deputy Earl, always blaming the guy with the pillowcase on his head. This town is so fearful that it looks beautiful and calm. Within 24 hours after the town got word of the killing, every gun store had sold out of weapons. Okay, but that also happened when the town got its first disco and when they got their first black sheriff. Time to call in the most famous Texas Ranger, but since Chuck Norris isn't available, here's Ben Johnson as Captain Earl Chicken Establishment. They were going to put the captain up in a hotel, but luckily he already owns several plantations around the area. Oh, and I think Deputy Earl Porkins is dead. Look alive, gentlemen. We got a phantom killer on our hands, and I want a search of every Billy Zane house, Ryan Carnes house, Gerard Butler house, and Robert England house in the area. Deputy Earl Shenanigans is here to be his escort to hilarity. Try not to wreck him. No, sir. Is this a sitcom now? I forgot about the episode of Green Acres where the Phantom Killer showed up to terrorize Hooterville. Sure, we could leave, but I forgot the keys and the studio audience. Chief, him. damn car keys, I can't find them nowhere. Which car do you plan to use? You in a seven, sir? Well, what in the hell is that right there under number seven? <laughs> Fantastic. It went to the last house on the left school of movies about serial killers and sex crimes being interrupted by bumbling cops. Although it works better in this movie, I think Texarkana may actually be a sitcom. Explains why the Phantom Killer was never caught. They were too busy running hilarious schemes at the Shady Rest Hotel. While the captain gets the only haircut they know how to do, the Merle Haggard, they set up decoys at Lover's Lane. Seems innocent enough. Oh, Lord, here comes your date. Hey, Spark Club, aren't you a little lopsided? Oh, it's Bosom Buddies now. They tell me old Sparky had to do to find that out too with Dick the Baggage Closet. <laughs> the fuck are you laughing at? You look like you kidnapped Pinocchio only so you could fuck puppets. I think our boys may strike out over at Lover's Lane, but they might lure Bugs Bunny into this Rocky and Muggsy cartoon. 
I don't know if I buy them as a teenage couple, if they even considered putting a tracker on Lloyd to catch the criminal, or are they too horny? What I can't understand is, how come that was bigger than this? <laughs> God! Yeah, well, you probably couldn't do that subplot today, which means the whole movie is bad! I don't mean to alarm everyone, but there may be cigar-smoking old men dressed as women at the prom! Just kidding. I'm not so sure the Phantom Killer is the weirdest thing in this town anymore. Why are the 40-year-old chaperones spiking the kid's punch? I know what gets me in the mood at prom. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Ted Nugent, bless our town by shooting the Phantom Killer in the face and cutting him up into a hundred steaks to serve our boys at the Sunday potluck. These kids have to get home. Their newborn babies are waking up. Thanks. Someone needs to invent rock and roll so these teens can have sex after prom instead of driving to Lover's Lane to fall asleep on each other. Has anyone considered the possibility that the Phantom Killer may be the Elephant Man? From here on out, this incident will be known as the Texas Car Door Side Hacker Massacre. When we come back, Teen Earl and his date will definitely be dead. And we're back, and Teen Earl and his date are definitely dead. This is all about revenge over his son, the unknown comic, not getting prom king. I'm starting to think this girl isn't all that interested in being killed. Oh, God, no. Mm, I can tell you're scared. Probably because her death scene is really silly. <laughs> Arcana trombone murders lacked subtlety and a proper tune. This case is attracting reporters from blocks away. CBS, NBC, and the Mutual Broadcasting System brought in nationally known commentators to arrange for nationwide broadcasts. However, Fox News was too busy reporting on the truth about my Chuck Norris joke. Now, gentlemen, let's ruin this dinner by talking about death. This man is definitely a sadist. Motivated by a strong sex drive. I guess you realize, Captain, that uh, the odds are against you. Well, what do you mean, Dr. Chris? <laughs> Where the fuck did you come from? Hmm, I think they've ruined someone else's appetite, too. Think he'll attack again on schedule? Not necessarily. I would say in view of the intensity of the manhunt, he'll probably change his pattern. He may go back into a normal pattern. Oh, that's not the killer. That guy actually left because his bread sticks or nothing more than whittled pieces of plywood. Look, we're never going to catch this killer, so let's play some side missions. How about this store robber? That's him in the green car. Straight ahead. He's bound and down, loaded up and trucking. And that's how the Phantom Killer turned out to be a better beer bootlegger than he was a killer. Sure, the thief is caught, but no thanks to them damn Duke boys. Catch him soon. Well, if you didn't fuel your car with moonshine, you might have caught him. Oh, but that ain't the end of this horn swoggling. Why does this town need a killer? No one who lives here will make it past the age of 30 without gravely injuring themselves. However, the thief is proven innocent of murder, from the narrator. By the time Lado reached headquarters, Sergeant Mal Griffin had convinced him he was not the Phantom Killer. But he was convinced that his new name is now Earl. This must be sweeps week at the town that dreaded sundown. That's why we get a special appearance from Don Wells. That might not put this in continuity with the legend of Boggy Creek, but it does with Return to Boggy Creek. Yeah. Ain't nothing gonna move Earl from reading his paper. 
<laughs> Lesson learned, people. Always tip your paper boy. We need to do a background check on everyone who hates screen doors. Wait a minute. This is the clip from the trailer that shot me. Turns out he was shooting someone else. Hmm, I miss the soundtrack of The Legend of Boggy Creek. Perhaps that would help them solve this case. Hey, Travis Crabtree. No wonder there were lawsuits. This movie slanders Travis Crabtree. Don Wells survived, but at what cost? Ooh, ooh, my prayers came true! My very own Mary Ann! Now the townsfolk are boarding up their homes to keep out paramount screenings of Transformers movies. Doesn't stop Bennett the Sage from delivering papers and demanding more tips or else. I'm glad you're all here. After extensive research, the Phantom Killer is definitely a murderous swarm of bees. Dang it, the bees theory didn't pan out. We're never gonna find this killer. Oh, there he is. Bad news, the killer escaped thanks to a train. And even more bad news, everyone's luggage was ruined. You should probably leave the case to us. We'll find them for you, but it's gonna cost you 20 plates of poop. So they didn't find the killer, but they did find reused footage from The Legend of Boggy Creek. I think it's obvious that the killer became a movie producer and apparently made this film about his antics and screened it for the public to make the people chasing him look stupid. And given the similar ending narration, I think the Phantom Killer and the Falk Monster may be the same person. Most would say that he is still living here and is walking free. And he loves going to see 70s horror movies, I guess. Given that the killer was never caught in real life, he's not captured or identified in the movie either. But I think it's clearly obvious that the killer was Earl. It gives us a wrap up on the other characters though. Today, Captain Earl searches for the terror train killer. Chief Earl made it his mission to pursue that no good dolomite. Sheriff Earl became a model for pre-faced Mr. Potato Heads. Mrs. Earl married another Earl, and Deputy Earl is still chasing that ever-changing rain. The real twist is that I, your narrator, am not an Earl at all, but a Vern. <laughs> While it took this movie a long while to receive any kind of home video release, it was a financial success, more than making back its $400,000 budget. The film has received a cult following over time, and even inspired the look of Jason Voorhees in Friday the 13th Part 2. A 2014 sequel was even made from producers Jason Blum and Ryan Murphy as a sort of meta-sequel where the first movie exists as a movie, which sort of does go along with this movie itself and how it became meta at the end of the film. Suspenseful scenes and some good old boy humor aside, it's very clear that the Phantom Killer and the Falk Monster could have been captured in minutes if Burt Reynolds and Dom DeLuise simply challenged the both of them to a cross-country race. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to leave to go star in my own movie. Yes, there are rednecks, and yes, they do eat people, but thankfully, we only hired the Phantom Killer to be the on-set driver. We've got enough to worry about already with the clowns and the cannibals. <clears throat> oh.